Good evening, people watching Miss 65, Lisa Boyce. I'm going to give you the gospel. It's in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Christ shed his blood for all of our sins, past, present, and future, was buried and rose again on the third day, according to scripture. We're saved by grace through faith in Christ alone. Not of ourselves, not of works, least any man should boast. It is grace, something we don't deserve that God gave his only begotten son that whosoever, you and I are whosoever, believe in him will not perish but have eternal life. How do you come to that? You admit you're a sinner in need of Christ. The moment you put your faith and trust in Christ Jesus, the moment you accept him as Savior, not only are you saved, but you're justified by the blood of Jesus, rapture ready and sealed until the day of redemption, which means you cannot and will not lose your salvation, period. The Holy Spirit will indwell in you. The Holy Spirit will lead you, guide you. The Holy Spirit is your best friend and the Holy Spirit will change you. Um, I guess, well, <laughs> First of all, I'm in a lot of pain right now. It's, I think it's the weather that's changing and it's really flaring me up big time. So um, usually every night after Kevin goes to bed, Cody and Zach and I, we watch a movie or a show together until about 1030 so I, I want to stay up for that because it gives me a chance to be with them and talk to them and everything so we do it every night whatever they want to watch they can watch it I don't endorse secular movies but the one that we watched the other night was called Interstellar with um, Matthew McConaughey John Lithrow and Matt Damon that was probably one of the best movies I've ever seen. It was outstanding. So if you ever have a family night where you want to watch a movie, Interstellar. Good movie. It was it's older, but it's a good movie. So but anyway, um this is off of uh Hal Turner. And this just came in, I say about an hour ago. NATO says Ukraine will become a member. Meanwhile, Russia's loading up on bombers right now. Indeed. They're already a, you might as well just include them, Ukraine, in NATO. They're already there. They just got to make it formal. So NATO Secretary General Hans Stoltenberg confirmed NATO's commitment on Ukraine on Tuesday, saying that the nation will one day become a NATO member. I get the impression, and I get the feeling, they will become a NATO member sooner than what everybody thinks. Yeah. Stoltenberg's remarks came as Secretary of State Anthony Blinken or Blink or whatever you want to call him and his NATO counterparts gathered in Romania to drum up urgently needed support for Ukraine aimed at ensuring that Moscow fails to defeat Ukraine as it bombards energy infrastructure. You think Russia don't know what's going on? Please. Stoltenberg also said NATO is examining the possibility of transferring Patriot air defense systems to Ukraine. Now remember what I said this morning. You can, you know what, these warnings are going to turn into out and out fight. Because you can only warn someone so many times. 
So the meeting in Romania, which shares NATO's longest land border with Ukraine, is likely to see NATO make fresh pledges of non-lethal support to Ukraine. Fuel, generators, medical supplies, winter equipment, and drone jamming devices. Now I got another question. They're going to send all this stuff over there to Ukraine. Do they really think the Ukrainian people are going to get it? Because if you think that, think again. Individual allies are also likely to announce fresh supplies of military equipment for Ukraine, chiefly the air defense systems that Kiev is so desperately seeks to protect the skies. But NATO as an organization will not to avoid uh, being dragged into a wider war with nuclear armed Russia. They will not. The ministers will hold a working dinner with the Ukrainian counterpart, Dmitro Kaluba, or Kaliba, on Tuesday evening, which was today. Well, according to their time zone yesterday, which is our today right now. As Stoltenberg made his remarks, Russian air forces were reloading reloading large numbers of bombs on TU-95 and TU-160 aircrafts at Ingalls Air Base in Russia for attack runs into Ukraine as seen in the cropped satellite picture that I'm going to send to you in this article below. With regard With regard to Stoltenberg saying NATO may transfer Patriot air defense missiles to Ukraine, Dmitry Medvedev, deputy chairman of the Russian Federation Council Senate, said if, as Stoltenberg hinted, NATO supplies Patriot complexes to Kiev's fanatics along with NATO personnel, they will immediately become a legitimate target of our armed forces. I hope Atlantic impotence understands this. Intelligence sources now report they expect another massive barrage of missiles to be fired by Russia against Ukraine now it's within the next 24 hours. When I reported it earlier, it was within the next 48 hours. Now it's within the next 24 hours. Suffice to say, this thing, uh, once again, has heated up. Um, then I get this. From Phoenix. So if you're in the Maricopa County area in uh, Arizona or Phoenix, listen up. Because tomorrow you're going to get an emergency notification test to be conducted near the Palo Verde nuclear power plant. So why are all these power plants all of a sudden doing test runs? Interesting. So this is saying right here, Phoenix officials with Maricopa County says that the Palo Verde generation, generating uh, station in cooperation with various states and local agencies will conduct a test of outdoor warning sirens tomorrow. The Palo Verde generating station, according to the United States Nuclear Regulatory Commission, the NRC, is a three-unit nuclear power plant located west of the Phoenix area. The test will involve outdoor warning sirens located within a 10-mile radius of the power plant. According to the statement, at the same time, Maricopa County 
will conduct an opt-in wireless emergency alert. Testing will involve activating the sirens twice and the WEA once. Sirens will be activated at 12 p.m. and again at 12.30 p.m. for approximately three minutes each time. The wireless emergency alert WEA will be tested at 12.15. Individuals will be stationed at each of the 70 sirens and they will report siren activations and wireless alert notifications to emergency managers following the test. The tests read a portion of the statement. Now this is, I guess this is what it's going to say. The message to accompany the WEA will state, this is a test of Maricopa County wireless emergency alert system. No action is required. I think we had that too here. It was a while ago. I think everybody had that. So the test of the siren system, according to the statement, is required by the um, Nuclear Regulatory Commission and the Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA. The WEA test is limited to the siren test area and only to phones that have opted in to receive test alerts. I'm, I got one, so I opted in for that. So I'm going to link that in the description box and I'm going to link the other article also in the description box. Um, this thing has gotten escalated. I told you earlier today that I have a feeling that something is about to go down and I'm praying it's the rapture. I'm praying it's the rapture for real. <laughs> so um, I will link these in the description box and I will be back hopefully pain free tomorrow but right now I am getting ready to go watch a movie with my sons and again um, that movie I recommend is uh, what is it interstellar wait hold on just a second I just got something from war news I will, um, I got to look at this and I will, I will get back to you about this. Um, let me uh, give you a little bit of this. Um, the founder of PMC Wagner. I can't pronounce his main name, made a chilling statement about the fate of 30,000 Ukrainian soldiers and foreign legion forces fighting in Bakhmut, referring to a Russian operation code name. This is the code name of this operation. It's called Meat Grinder. So, um... Bamut is a large, well-fortified area with roads, suburbs, and water barriers. The Ukrainian army is well-prepared and offers a worthy resistance. Our task is not Bamut, the city itself, but the destruction of the Ukrainian army and the reduction of its combat, combat potential, which has extremely positive effect on other regions, which is why this operation was named by um, Bakhmut Meat Grinder. Um, they're talking of dropping two tons of bombs. I'm going to link this in the description box. This just came in not even five seconds ago. Two tons of bombs on Ukrainian soldiers. Uh, I told you before, Russia's not playing. They're not, an, uh, 
nation to mess with. Serious. Uh, let me see what else is here. This information about huge losses of the armed forces of Ukraine was confirmed by well-known in Ukraine. Indeed, from the Bakhmut front, there is chilling audio-visual material that dozens of Holy cow. Um, yeah, I'll link this in, in the description box. It says the armed forces of Ukraine attempted to break through Russian defenses in the direction of Lunchask with Russian artillery opening heavy fire in the area of one of the highways. The armed forces of Ukraine suffered casualties and a significant part of their forces were forced into hiding awaiting reinforcements. However, an unexpected raid by a Russian Su-34 bomber changed the situation completely. In the video, you see how Ukrainian army, having left the combat zone, hid in trees, waiting for the arrival of the evacuation team. However, only after a few minutes, a Russian bomber appeared in the area, which dropped four, 500, kilogram arterial aerial bombs directly on the site of the Ukrainian shelter. Okay, this thing has gotten way. They're leveling this area. I, I will link this in the description box. And um, if anything else comes up with this, I'll be back on before I go to bed. I'll be back on to give you whatever is coming up. But... I'm going to keep track of this right now. I will be back later. Thank you.